All right, we have a question uh, on combustion with stoichiometry. It includes the complete combustion of octane, a component of gasoline. So we're given the uh, balanced equation for the combustion of octane. And remember, a combustion equation always involves the presence of oxygen to support the combustion. And the balanced equation will include 25 oxygen molecules in this case. We give 16 CO2 molecules, products are all gaseous, 18 water molecules. So these numbers represent the stoichiometry of the reaction, meaning 2 moles of octane combined with 25 moles of oxygen, 16 moles of carbon dioxide, and 18 moles of water. The first question is how many moles of oxygen are needed to burn 1.25 moles of octane. So we start off with 1.25 moles of octane, and the uh, stoichiometry is 25 to 1, and that's what I've included here. So 25 moles of oxygen, I needed 2 moles of octane. The answer gives you 15 and 5 eighths moles of oxygen, which equals 15.625. You're only now 3 sig figs in the answer, so I've rounded it off to find 15.6 moles of oxygen. In B, the question is how many grams of oxygen are needed to burn 10 grams of octane? So the first step here, remember these problems run along the lines of grams to moles, moles to moles through the stoichiometry, and then from moles back to grams. It's always the same format. So we're starting off with grams of octane. We're going to divide by the molar mass of octane to give us um, the number of moles of octane. I did it all in one step. So this part gives us the moles of octane. This is the stoichiometry part over here. So 25 to 2. 25 moles of oxygen are needed for every 2 moles of octane. And then to, to convert back to grams of oxygen, I've multiplied by the molar mass of oxygen. These red arrows signify how I mark it. When I do the marking scheme, I look for each one of these discrete steps. So even if you get the wrong answer, you still get the part marks from the reasoning process. Uh, the answer comes up 35.0154. I kept all the decimal places in the calculator, but when you report the final answer, it can't have more than three significant figures, so it has to round down to 35.0. In step C, this is probably the more difficult step, uh, we're told there are 4.25 liters of octane, and we're given the density of octane. To solve this part, you have to transpose some variables on the density equation. Density equals mass over volume. This letter here is rho. The Greek letter rho is used to represent density. So I've transposed the V because I know the density and I know the volume, and I'm trying to find the mass of octane. We start off with 4.25 liters of octane. The conversion factor is 1,000 ml per liter. Incidentally, 1 ml is equal to 1 centimeter cubed and it's also sometimes referred to as a cc. You'll see it written on uh, syringes, typically, cc. It's the same thing. One ml, one centimeter cube, one cc is the same measure of volume. Ml is usually reserved for liquids, though, but it's fine to use it also for gases. Um, cc is not exactly an SI uh, way of designating the unit, but it is in common usage, so we should be familiar with it. Anyway, 4.25 liters of the liquid, 1,000 mLs per liter, so you get 4,250 mLs. Plug in the numbers in the equation that's been uh, rearranged to solve, to isolate the variable that you want. The density is 0 0.692 grams per mL, the mLs cancel, and you find out that there are 2,941 grams of octane. From this point, we find the grams of octane. Divide by the molar mass of octane to find how many moles of octane, that's the step here. We multiply by the stoichiometry from oxygen, uh, between oxygen and octane, which is 25 to 2. And then we multiply by the molar mass of oxygen, keeping in mind that oxygen is a diatomic gas, 2 times 15.394. You get this answer in your calculator, and you have to report it to three significant figures. 
which I did here. Uh, these zeros are spacers. It looks like we have five significant figures. It would only be five signi uh, significant figures if we actually put the decimal place there. But because the decimal place is not there, that counts as three significant figures. Some people are not comfortable with stating it that way, so I rewrote it as a exponential. 1.03 times 10 to the 4 grams of oxygen is your final answer the way, and the way you should report it. Question number two is a limiting reagent question. One gram each of sodium hydrogen carbonate, also known as sodium bicarbonate, is mixed with one gram of citric acid. These two react, but we have to find out uh, which one is going to be used up first. The balanced equation requires three moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate to react with one mole of citric acid. Form three moles of CO2 plus three moles of water. Apologize for the crowding. And uh, one mole of citric acid, uh, sodium citrate, sorry. So the stoichiometry is three to one to three to three to one. The question they ask here is, which one of these two is the limiting reagent, the sodium bicarbonate or the citric acid? So to, to, to discuss, to calculate that, we know that we have one gram each, we divide by the molar mass of each, we find out that we have 0 0.011 gram, uh, moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate and 0 0.005 moles of citric acid, which I symbolize as CA. It appears as though we have more than enough moles of uh, sodium bicarb, but the stoichiometry is 3 to 1. So we have to do initial, an additional calculation to find out how much bicarbonate is necessary to react with this amount of citric acid. So the stoichiometry being 3 to 1 forces us to multiply this number by 3. So we need 0 0.15 moles of sodium bicarbonate, but we only have 0 0.019. Therefore, we realize that sodium bicarbonate is the limiting reagent. So that's what I stated here, the limiting reagent is sodium bicarbonate. In section B, we're asked how many grams of sodium bicarbonate form? Sorry, how many, uh, so many grams of carbon dioxide form? How do we calculate that? Well, we have to start our calculation with the limiting reagent. We have to start our calculation with this number. This is the reagent that is going to stop the reaction. So we start off with that number. We factor in the stoichiometry, which is 3 to 3. 3 moles of CO2 are produced for every 3 moles of sodium bicarbonate. We multiply by the molar mass of carbon dioxide, and we get the following answer, which has to be rounded down to three significant figures. 0 0.5 to 4 grams of CO2 is generated. In the last step, you're asked how many grams of excess reactant. This is the excess reactant. So how much of this is left over? How do we find that out? Well, we have to do our calculation, again, starting from this number, factoring in the stoichiometry, which is here. We start off with this number, factor in the stoichiometry, one mole of citric acid is used for every three moles of sodium bicarbonate, and we find out that many moles of uh, citric acid is used. How much citric acid do we have to begin with? This much, we already calculated it earlier. So this number minus that number will give us how much is left over in moles. And that's what we did here. So we have 0.012 moles of citric acid left times the molar mass of citric acid, which was already calculated here. I didn't have room to write it in, so I just squeezed it in there. Final answer is 0.238 grams of citric acid. 